Hello, I'm Tamsin Wheatley. Welcome to this bonus episode of Folklore. I wanted to share with you this email I received from one of my listeners. Dear Tamsin, I'm writing to you because the newest episode of Folklore got me thinking about my own encounter with a strange beast. I never really talk about it because it's one of those things that has just never made sense to me. Even now, as an adult, I think back to it and I know it just can't be right, but it happened. Or at least I'm sure it happened. I went to a Catholic school. My family weren't especially religious or anything, but the school was very strict, which meant that me and my friends, whenever we wanted to get up to no good, would have to sneak off the ground so as not to get caught. The school fields backed onto this sort of large copse with a pond in it, and that was where we would go when we wanted to smoke or get up to no good. The copse itself was known within the school as Satan's Wood. I always sort of thought that was just a joke, because it was where we all went to do dumb things banned by the school. There were rumours, though, that a boy had killed himself there by hanging himself from one of the trees. Again, I always just put this down to general school nonsense. After all, I'm pretty sure every school in the southwest has a haunted copse or bike shed or toilet. I've never found any evidence that there really was a boy. And I have looked more than once, but I do remember that whenever I went there, I would always feel a little off. It was quite a dark place and it smelled because the water was gross and the ground was boggy. Plus, kids had been throwing their cigarette butts and God knows what else into the pond for years, so that probably didn't help. Anyway, I went there one lunchtime with my friend Sarah and we were planning to have a cheeky smoke when the wind suddenly started picking up and it got really, really cold. Sarah and I both knew something weird had happened, and I'm not sure quite how to explain, but everything just felt odd all of a sudden. Like we'd moved to a different space. It was darker. It was colder. And then we both heard this sort of huffing behind us. Of course, we panicked and spun around because we thought maybe it was a teacher and that we'd be in trouble, but there was nothing there. At the time, I'm not sure what I thought, but when I think back on it now, I'm sure it sounded like maybe a dog or a wolf of some sort, snarling or panting. I don't know. Sarah got freaked out and ran away, but I was too scared to move. I don't know why, but the coldness and the darkness just got to me. I couldn't budge. Maybe I was a little curious too. I know I was scared, that's for sure. I watch Sarah running up the field back towards the school, and I hear this sort of dripping in the water. So I slowly turn myself back around and that's when I see it. It wasn't on the bank, but it was in the reflection. This sort of hairy horned goat man. I don't know how else to describe it. He's hunched over and he's collecting the water in his hands and drinking from it. But it's only his reflection and he doesn't seem to notice me. His hair or fur is jet black. So much so in fact that I can't make out any other features beyond his general shape. He's big though, with broad shoulders and large hands. His horns sort of curl out from his head like a goat's would, but they twist in the wrong direction, upwards, and they're also black. I stand there watching him for what feels like the longest time, and then suddenly something drops in the water and makes it ripple, and he's gone. And with the ripple, everything else was gone too. Still, I don't move. I don't know what else to do. I just wait there silently until Sarah comes back with one of the teachers. Even then, I'm not sure I really understood what was happening. Even when they led me to the headmistress's office and gave us both a good hiding, I'm not sure I was paying attention. All I could think about was the creature in the pond. I've never managed to really figure it out. Like I said, it just doesn't make sense. Sarah and I got away with a couple of whacks from the cane and that was it but it wasn't because of the teachers that we never went back to the cops. We never spoke about how weird it was, and I never told Sarah what I'd seen. As far as I know, no one else had ever had an encounter like that either. It was strange, and I still find it scary. I wondered if perhaps it might somehow be related to the Black Shark. Anyway, thank you for reading my email. Keep up the good work, and I'm looking forward to the next episode. Regards, Denise Fairborn. Thank you for joining me for this mini app. 
Remember, main episodes are released every other Saturday. To get in touch and share your thoughts, please search at folklore underscore pod on Twitter or find our official Facebook page. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share and subscribe and give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you found us to help us reach even more listeners. You can also join in the discussion over on our official Folklore Facebook group or you can support the show and help make magic happen over on Patreon. And in exchange, you'll get access to all kinds of exclusive content, including some behind-the-scenes snippets, bonus stories and extra interviews. 